Hello, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today we're going to do a relatively quick video in Photoshop and we're going to be using the 3D tools to take a website mock-up and kind of tilt it and view it in a 3D space basically. All right, so you can do this in several different ways. If you already have the website launched, you can take a screenshot of the browser. That's what we're going to do. But if you just have a Photoshop mock-up and the site's not yet built, you can use that as well to do the same thing. All right, so there's no foot, uh, project files for this, so you don't have to anything. You don't have to download anything. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com and subscribe here on YouTube. All right, let's get started. All right, so there's two ways to approach this. Uh, if you have the live website already up, like I do, uh, I'm just going to use designcourse.com. You can Alt and print screen to take a screenshot of the interface uh, or the layout or whatever, and if you don't have it and you have like a Photoshop mock-up or whatever, you can use that as well. So I'm just going to do the first case here. So I'm going to use two different pages, uh, just the home page and then just a uh, one that's not live yet for Visual Identity course I'm working on. And so what I'm going to do is I, I want to see more of the interface. So what I'll do is just scale this up vertically and drag it up. And I'm also going to move it off screen. And then I'm just going to hit alt and print screen here in windows and that will allow me to only get a screenshot of the current window selected instead of the whole desktop all right so file new and then paste that in and then i'm going to switch over to the other window this one and do the same thing and make sure not to resize the browser window because that's kind of important all right so I've alt print screened and paste that in. All right. So what I want to do is get rid of the browser portion. So I'm going to zoom up here just to make sure with the rectangular marquee tool, left click and drag all the way down here, just to the left of the scroll area right there. So hit control C and then control N for a new document and control V to paste that in. So now we have just the interface without the actual document or the browser rather. Switch to layer one, control C and then control V to paste that in. Now we don't need th that anymore. So close that out. All right, so now what we wanna do with layer two selected, what we'll do is go to 3D, new 3D extrusion from selected layer. All right, so what we can do is if we use this tool and we left click, we'll get this area that kind of pops up. And so we can start rotating this thing and doing all sorts of, all sorts of different things. So if we come here to the middle, we can left click and drag to scale it down. I'm going to scale it down later, like right around there. And then we can also rotate it by coming over here in this middle icon right there. And so to rotate around the Y axis, we can drag left, and we can see that it's kind of on this big block that's extruded. So if we go over here to the 3D tab, and then we come over to this section, double click on layer two, we have extrusion depth. I'm just going to take that down to zero. So I'm gonna type in zero and hit enter. And we don't want it to cast shadows and we don't want it to catch shadows. All right, so now we want to rotate this around the x-axis. And so you can see we can kind of make it look like it's kind of flat or kind of just at a 45 degree angle or something, uh, just for an interesting perspective. Then I can move it over maybe around here. And that's pretty much all we have to do for the perspective. You can orient yours, you know, however you wish. Uh, so now what we can do is come over here, right click and duplicate that layer. Come down to layer one, control A, control C. And then right here we'll see under textures, we'll see diffuse. We can double click on layer two, hit okay. Control V to paste that in. You can hide this bottom one right there. And then control S to save and switch back. 
And now we have two 3D layers, one with the first home page and then the second sub page. All right, so we can go ahead and get rid of that background. And we can see that the lighting is kind of uh, making it a little bit washed out. But before I adjust that, what we need to do is let's move these around a little bit. So with the top layer selected, the duplicated one, we can move this up, maybe to the right a little bit, maybe just, just right around there. All right. All right, so if we come over to 3D, double click on infinite light one. Right now, this light will only affect this layer because it's on that specific layer. Uh, what we can do is play around with this light intensity and we can zoom up here to 100% and select on, oh, let's zoom out real quick. Now if we play around with this, we can begin to see, come out to a point where wherever we think is basically preferable in terms of the lighting for this. So I think this is good enough. We can see the light gray portion over here for each of these. So it's pretty much as you would see it in a browser. All right, so that was 77%. And let me go ahead and close that out. Go back to layers, click over here, come back to 3D, infinite light one, change that to 77 as well. Or if you wanted to make it a little bit uh, less, you know, light because it's behind this one, you can do that. I'm just going to leave mine at 77. All right. And now at this point, we can just go ahead to... I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. Go ahead to filter, or 3D rather, and render. So the rendering may take a little bit of time, so I'm just going to pause so you don't have to sit through this. And there's a basically a, a time remaining thing down here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause that. All right, and one thing I noticed after that rendered is this top layer was a little bit uh, pixelated for some reason. So what I did to fix that, if that's the case for you, is just right click and hit render. So I rendered that and now it's smoother looking. So let me go ahead and delete this bottom layer one. I'm gonna hit Control Shift N and enter for a new layer, drag it to the bottom. I'm going to fill that in with a, basically a background white color. And I did notice that these kind of did turn out a little gray. I uh, which wasn't consistent to the actual, what do you call, uh, when I was in preview and rendered before I rendered. Uh, so what you could do is go back and adjust that intensity a little bit more or just right click, rasterize the 3D later and for both of these. And we'll do the same thing here. And then what you could do is simply take, yeah, what we could do is group them, control G, and then add an adjustment layer or just go to window adjustments if that's not viewable over here to you. And make sure we click on this to make sure it only affects that layer. And you can turn the brightness up ever so slightly if you wish. All right, and another thing we could do is also come down here and create a new layer, make it a layer mask right here. So it's a layer mask of this. And if you wanna add your own shadow, it's very simple. You could just use a soft brush I've never experimented with the 3D shadow, so that could po probably be a possibility, but to do one real simple isn't that big of an issue. I'm gonna make a, let's just make black for now. Like that, and then you could take down the opacity. So it's not so visible like that, I guess. And there we go.
So obviously you could take this in a thousand different ways uh, in terms of how you want to present this. Uh, I'm going to try adding another layer for a shadow real quick. Actually, I wonder if I could take just a drop shadow on that layer. Where is it at? Right here. And adjust the angle here. Just to try to make it consistent with the other one. Yeah, something like that. Right around there, hit OK. And there we go. Very simple. I. Uh, so yeah, I've never really messed too much around with Photoshop's 3D. I've done, I think, one other tutorial on it, but uh, it's actually quite capable, more so than you would think. Now, of course, if you wanted to use uh, like an actual 3D app like Blender to do this same sort of thing, you could, you could definitely do so. But uh, if you wish to stick with Photoshop, then this is one good way of creating an uh, pretty much an accurate 3D representation of a website or mobile mock-up. All right, so that is it for today. Uh, if you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com. Subscribe here on YouTube for sure. And I'll see you tomorrow with a new video. All right, goodbye.